Okay, I shouldn't have been confused uh, at Sarge's introduction there when the crowd goes crazy and I thought I was at a, a, a mosh pit. Because every time I live about a half a mile from here, every time this ship gets underway or it comes back into port, the parking horn and I'm going away horn uh, has the loudest blasts ever. Everything Sarge does uh, is supersized. Uh, I would expect nobody that he invited to unsupersize your excitement of his change of command today or the fact that you're confused that he successfully got through this change of command today. <laughs> Big fighter time. We have a lot of fun together. Hey, Sarge, thanks for, uh, thanks for the introduction. It goes on and on and on. It just means I'm old and the crowd is pretty excited. I didn't use a cane to walk up here, so I appreciate that. Lots of great faces uh, I see in the crowd. Most important faces are the uh, Abraham uh, Lincoln crew here, so make sure you jump around, swish your legs. We can't hardly see you, so you can move and do just about anything just so you don't keel over in the back. But uh, as Sarge said, thank God for the breeze today. Hey, Webb, uh, nice having you here today. I know you had Archer Studio over the last three weeks in Hawaii running a large-scale exercise 21 that was in the media about a 1,000 times today. Great role uh, for you, and I can't wait to talk to you about it. You and Gina have been with us for a long time, going back to big fighter roles, and I'm going to have a heckling story for you here in the uh, speech, too, so all good. Did Nancy Brown make it? I don't recognize Nancy. That's, there you are. Uh, I don't recognize you out of uniform here today, uh, but it's great to have you here today. Uh, doesn't surprise me with your uh, energetic personality while you're also uh, in the Sarge crowd too, so I appreciate that. Sako Akano, are you here? Okay, so you're the one I'm writing to all the time about IWS stuff. It's good to put a name to a face. Really good to put a name to a face uh, now. And then Marvin. Uh, uh, I can't tell with everybody's, there you are, Marvin. I uh, can't tell with everybody's, uh, uh, everybody's masks on. Thanks for taking care of me when you were with Admiral Davidson. Uh, all good friends here. Hey, uh, a warm welcome, uh, Andrea. Uh, as, uh, as you've worked through this, Emma, 16 uh, at Coronado, hi. We've known you guys, have known you and Sarge a long time. I haven't known you uh, as well, but back to Black Lion Bashes, Good times back at Oceana, and then our excitement for Melody and I to come out here and know that you guys are out here in California with us. It was, it's been pretty awesome. And of course, you've supersized our lifestyle since we've been out here. Uh, you know, Walt had to give me three words because it's part of the speech prep for this that would describe you. Compassion, humor, and patience. I agree with the compassion piece. The energy's there. The humor piece, that's flat out. He nailed that one. Uh, the patience piece? for putting him in his place, maybe. There. Uh, in the 18 years you've had in marriage, moves, transitions, deployments, the last one especially, underways, and all the other adversities that both of you guys have put up with, I want to thank you all for what you've done. Uh, the Navy will never be able to repay you for the times that we've taken away, but know that the leadership that you gave to our sailors and their families and spouses and our clubs uh, can never be measured, and we're never going to be able to repay you for that. So thank you for supporting Sarge all the way uh, through his career. Uh, mom, brother, sister-in-law, niece, that's the cheetah flips that we've done, uh, whether they're here. They're going to be, uh, yeah, yeah, niece, they, so you guys made it. We did plane, trains, and automobiles yesterday, so some people made it, some people didn't. Some people are going to be virtual, uh, so that's good. So thanks for everybody for at least joining with Sarge today. I'm glad you guys could come here and support him uh, for his last couple of years uh, from July. Uh, to August now, two years in charge of this great uh, carrier. Uh, change of command, yep, it sure is. It's one of the most time-honored traditions that we have in the United States Navy is we celebrate the past and we look forward to the future and pay tribute to the privilege as well as the immense burden of leadership and the humbling responsibility that it carries. Uh, this past year has been tough. COVID-19 has put us in a spot uh, that we could never thought of how we were going to fight out of that. It's been tough on everyone. Personal hardships, uncharted environments. It threw a curveball at us that no one saw was coming. Sarge, your efforts on Abraham Lincoln with COVID-19 were particularly incredible. From the last job that I had when Bullet Miller had you in charge of designing the playbook for COVID-19 for naval aviation, uh, I knew we were in good hands. And then when I saw the product, it was pretty impressive. Uh, uh, you probably 
probably pales in comparison when you think, I know you did a lot of work for that, but how much that product was used throughout the Navy. OPNAV uh, N3, N5 is the well, as well as to build the standard operating guidance for all of the Navy. Pretty phenomenal work that you did for that. You led the team with tenacity, keen focus, mission readiness, and you kept the crew mission ready, safe and healthy. I met Sarge at uh, Oceana. Obviously, he's a 213 guy, Black Lion Bash. We're not going to go talk into a whole bunch of stuff because the club used to be great back in those days. So uh, uh, he speaks after me. Therefore, he has, the, uh, he has ultimate retribution. Uh, I'll just say we had a lot of fun uh, at Oceana. Flying the big wing fighter was a ton of things, uh, uh, a, great, uh, a great way to grow up in naval aviation. But on top of the great things that you did back when you were a J.O., and you can read your bio, you see how well-rounded, which means he's done a lot of jobs and he's been told to do a lot of hard things while skidding along on sandpaper. Uh, you'll see that he has conditioned himself for this job. Ten-month deployment. This chap said you called that a long one, and you, your comment on Dukem didn't make it seem like you liked it that much. 295 days to be exact. It was around the world, 72,000 nautical miles. Third Fleet, Fifth Fleet, Seventh Fleet. 33 underway replenishments, those are all good for my two hours of conning alongside uh, as a wannabe uh, CAG. 32 transits of the Strait of Hormuz, that's amazing. Malacca, Singapore, other things, and all doing, uh, executing our national defense strategy. Uh, 5,000 aircraft sorties, 10,000 hours, 400 sorties in Afghanistan and Syria, weapons delivered against ISIS and Al-Qaeda, switching home ports, Norfolk, San Diego. There was no time for Abraham Lincoln or this leadership team to rest and hit the beach when you arrived in San Diego as you embarked on the largest planned incremental availability ever completed on an aircraft carrier in San Diego. Your team did over 4,000 spaces, systems upgrades, thousands, 26,000 work packages, all during that short schedule and for once a schedule was done on time you saw lung in the background didn't you yeah believe me when i got here i saw him in the background too praying that you would keep this thing on schedule and you did a nice job you led onboard preps for integration of the next generation air wing platforms which is part of our air wing of the future with jsf f-35 the mfa 314 CMV-22 Ospreys and our E-2D, which is going to be the quarterback of the fleet, uh, the air wing when we start flying. Uh, but the partial set is already set on Vinson, and it's on Abraham Lincoln now. A lot of awards. 2019 Air Force's Battle E, 1920 Retention Excellence Awards, which is incredible based on the environment that we've been in. The Phoenix, uh, Self Sec Def Phoenix Award. 2020 Chief of Naval Air Forces Safety E Award, EPA Awards, PAC Fleet's uh, selection for the Secretary of Navy Environmental Awards. I mean, it's just a who's who of lists underneath your great character. You've kept people healthy in this crazy environment. BZ to you, you know, for a job well done. And for that last horn blast when you came in the other day. The list of achievements is a tough act to follow. Uh, men and women of Abraham Lincoln are in very capable hands with Captain Bowerschmidt, B-12. Amy, you have learned, i got to figure up within the mass here, you've absolutely earned your way here, and I know great achievement and experiences are on the horizon for you and the crew. You've got an impressive career, too, in 26 years of service. Great leadership, skilled helicopter pilot, over 3,000 hours flying the platform, a warfighter. Previously served as aide-de-camp to Strike Group 7, Department head in the Warlords 51, supersized in Japan, EA to the J6COM uh, Joint Staff, commanding officer for the Spartans of 71, uh, HSM 70. Did you transition them to the new stuff? Okay, I expected that. You guys earned the 2011 Jimmy Thatch and the Arnold Esbel Awards for tactical innovation and excellence. What a great, that squadron has a great reputation that's paid the way for the HSL to HSM and HSM capabilities. So I appreciate that, as well as the 2020, 2012 Battle E Award. I don't have a Battle E ribbon. I'm jealous as can be for the COs that have earned that ribbon. It's not a new ship for you in 2016. You were uh, Abraham Lincoln XO. A little different piece for you to set in right now. And you most recently commanded uh, the dock landing ship, transport ship, San Diego. Hey, welcome back, and I look forward to working with you. 
So some comments. Uh, Abraham Lincoln is not a strange ship uh, for me. Uh, back when Webb was in Djibouti, another garden spot of the world, and I was in Fifth Fleet, another Sarge was sailing around in the, Abra in the uh, Arabian Gulf. Sarge Alexander with Shoe Shoemaker were also on an around the world cruise doing phenomenal work maintaining the stability uh, in that region. So from Sarge Alexander to Sarge Slaughter, it's not hard to imagine the excellence that has been transferred down from two Sarges, but also that has been retained in this carrier, Abraham Lincoln. Lincoln's the fifth of the Nimitz class carriers, but it performs even more spectacular than it looks today. T-Bone, you're reading pretty good today, and I know as an XO, you were out here scrubbing till about uh, uh, 15 minutes prior to change of command today. Nice job in getting the ship ready. Talk a little bit about carriers because they're in the news. And next year, 22 is going to be the 100th anniversary for the first purpose-built built, first purpose -built carrier in the United States Navy. We're now engaged in great power competition. It's no kidding. All you have to do is look in the papers and read uh, our competition with Russia, emergence of Russia, and the Communist Party in uh, China. Specifically, the carriers made for command of the seas and CNO's guidance for sea control and power projection. That is why this platform exists. We lose sight, though, that we've been in conflict since 1991, Desert Storm, Desert Shield. Every one of us is in uniform has known nothing but conflict in all of our careers in the Navy. Again, we've been gaining reps and sets. The Navy has been ready to expand over the last 20 years, uh, and through those reps and sets, we already have expanded in our capabilities, exemplified by the last exercise, the LSE Large Scale Exercise 21. The carrier's been key to stability, response, and assurance across all phases of conflict. From Nimitz class to Gerald R. Ford, which just completed its critical full ship shock trials successfully. On her road to employment, she will be something that will now have the attention on the other coast. Navy and naval aviation is moving forward. Geography and geopolitics make land-centric solutions impractical and difficult. The carrier strike group, right capability, right place, right time, forward, under distributed maritime operation concepts, practiced during LSE 21 across the globe, make the carrier strike group a formidable force multiplier that demands attention. Good luck, Marvin. The complexity of the next conflict paired with the current discussions by some on the capabilities of the carrier give the opponent complete situational awareness and extraordinary probability of hits. I would caution that the fog of war works on both sides of conflict. High-end tactics, techniques, and procedures across all domains create confusion in the adversary's kill chain. Targeting a moving object is complex, technical, while ground and shore-based targets have been fixed since the earth cooled I'm confident the lethality and survivability of the carrier strike group. Dispersed, robust C2, multi-domain, agile, survivable, effective, self-sufficient, full combat scale capability, give the carrier strike group, centered on carriers and air wings, the ability to implement these fundamentals throughout the maritime space. I'm confident in our future because of the resilient sailors, chiefs, and officers who employ these machines. I'm especially confident in the men and women who command them. Congrats, Sarge, on a job well done. And B-12 for your leadership as this great ship prepares for deployment and then sails west. God bless our Navy. God bless Naval Aviation. And God bless uh, B-12 coming in and Sarge for leaving such a great ship behind. Thank you.